Hi, everyone. I'm Connie Myers, and this is Norm Shriver. Norm, thank you, and happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to you, too, Connie. Thanks for having me on again. Well, um, this month is a, a month of celebration for many, many, many people with all different faiths and belief systems. Um, so it's a time of joy and parties and celebrations. Um, however, a few years ago, uh, people that were trying to celebrate had a big surprise uh, when it when the tsunami hit. Um, you tell us a little bit about your experience with you were there a few a, what, a few years before that or at the same yeah event? yeah and happy holidays upcoming to you too and you forgot one thing though it's the time to eat more than we should very important <laughs> right definitely you definitely got to do that in the holidays <laughs> but yeah so. You were talking about, uh, it's a while back now, it's amazing how time flies, but this was actually in 2004, there was a massive earthquake and ensuing tsunami in Southeast Asia. Um, it hit a few places It originated, I think in India or Sri Lanka or off the coast, it was a magnitude nine something earthquake, this is 2004. And then there were tsunamis in in India, I believe, Indonesia, and then a massive one that hit Thailand. So it hit a place called uh, Phuket, P-H-U-K-E-T, Phuket, Thailand, which now is a wonderful tourist destination, beautiful beaches. Um, I had actually been there for Christmas in 2000. And so I had been there, small little beach place in, in, in uh, those days. I had been there three years earlier and that exact spot is where the this mega tsunami hit in 2004. Um, I'm not sure if you've uh, um, seen accounts of it, but they made a movie out of it. I think a bad HBO movie or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, well, I forget how many it killed a lot of people. And yeah, there's there's there is footage of the wave coming ashore and and just engulfing the entire beach community i mean it was yeah you know um i talk i, I actually tsunamis are one of the things i talk about in my training and um you know they they have along the western coast they have all the uh, evacuation routes for tsunamis and in, in the reading, u.s they do yes oh, yeah. okay i didn't know that yeah yeah and well the, actually the last tsunami to hit northern california northern california oregon and washington was in 1980 something i don't remember exact year but um it was a it was an earthquake that happened in alaska that then caused a tsunami and it went all the way down to northern california so you see these signs of tsunami evacuations yep. and you know they talked about when you when you read on fema and stuff they talk about being at least 100 feet above the sea level yep to me, that doesn't seem like enough. <laughs> it no, seems no. like after after seeing that wave that came across, came in to Thailand, it, it was, I mean, it was enormous. It was a hundred feet. It was, it, it was a hundred feet high, actually. Yeah, they I say think the it waves was, yeah. got a hundred feet. And that, that um, on record, I think that killed almost 200,000 people just in Thailand. Um, and that wasn't hit a main city by any means. That was, a, you know, a coastal area. Um, but that was just on what's on record. So it's probably a lot more. Oh, definitely. Um, but, you know, yeah. so it was before the age of cell phone cameras and everything. But there are still photos and, and videos of that exact incident happening where people had out their video cameras on vacation or a few people were snapping photos. And um, it, it freaks me out, but I, I've collected some of them to write some blogs and articles and you know, safety alerts for tsunamis. And there's photos where one in particular, this guy looks like a US tourist, like a teenager. He's at the pool at his resort on nice grass and he's looking over his head and there's probably a 20 foot wall of water. You know, so it's not like a bathtub filling up. It's like, it moves this way, right? And with a tsunami, you know this, actually the first sign is the water pulls out. So right. in, Th in Thailand, then the, like all the water pulled out for kilometers and there was dead fish everywhere on the ground. And like, this is the weirdest low tide we've ever seen. And people are wandering out. And then all of a sudden this massive wave comes in. So 
so scary. And it's almost, you see the pictures or videos, you almost can't believe it, but it happens so fast. And water is so powerful in, in those magnitudes. I, I don't think that people understand the power of water. I mean, every year here, when we have our monsoons, we have fast flooding here in Las Vegas. And every year there's either somebody gets killed or yeah. somebody is, has to be rescued because the water comes so fast and it's so forceful. Yep. If you have six inches of water, an SUV will float. Six inches. Wow. Wow. I didn't know and, that. And so yeah. when you see cars entering those intersections where there's lots of flooding and stuff, it, people don't understand the power of water. When you have something like a tsunami and, and people, it's like I write about it in my course, but people are like, I'm never going to experience a tsunami. That's not going to be me. Well, you know, it's not going to be me that I'm going to experience an earthquake or a hurricane or yeah. a winter storm or, or whatever. And being prepared if you're in those areas, like for example, along the coastline. And, and by the way, the East coast is not immune to that is either the last it's been a while since 1939 was the last time mm. that a tsunami hit the Eastern United States, but it does happen. Yeah. And people don't understand, like they don't think about preparing for that. If you live in like, for example, um, I visited a friend of mine, uh, Carrie Harnett, who's in Astoria, basically all of Astoria is in a tsunami route. Wow. Because it's right on the border of the ocean and where the Columbia River, which is a huge river. Yeah, massive. Come together. Yeah. And, and so that whole corner there is, is Astoria. And the entire town, even though it's built on hills, is a tsunami evacuation area. Uh, when she bought her house, that was one of the things she took into consideration. You know, am I going to have to? And they worry? probably had to disclose it in the paperwork. Oh, right? they did yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That you're you're buying a house that's in a tsunami route, yeah. and and so you need to be aware of that. And what are you going to do? So I asked her. I said, "So what have you done to prepare in case that does happen?" I mean, the good news about a tsunami is you do have warning, mm -hmm. and typically, I mean, you can yep. have an earthquake in Japan and it's going to, it can affect the Western United States. Yep. So you have time to prepare for it, but so many people don't believe that it's going to happen to them. Yeah. Like, and to, to your point, like a tsunami that's, you know, and it won't happen unless it happens. Right. So you want to, you want to have a little caution or know what to do or where to go at least. But when you explain it to people like that, that whenever there's an earthquake, you know, in the ocean somewhere, that's a possible tsunami then it's like oh well we do have a lot of earthquakes yeah exactly exactly yeah. so and, and a lot of times the earthquakes that happen out in the ocean are much more intense yeah than the ones on land and i think yeah. i think a lot of it has to do with the depth and the ocean the water i yep. think that's probably Just the power magnifies. there yeah yeah but yeah there's there's a, you know now the technology is much better where like you said they could track, you know, uh, right when an earthquake is happening or before and what's happening with uh, the, the power or energy collecting in the ocean that might be a tsunami. And, um, and also now they have, you know, in Thailand and in New York and California and the, the tsunami warning where they sort of say, you see these signs all over and they sort of say, this is where you go or this is where you go. So it doesn't hurt just to know what it is, know what to do and know where the heck to go if it happens. Um, here's a good story you'll like about being prepared from that 2004 tsunami. So it killed, you know, a couple hundred thousand people. It just, it was insane how fast it moved in. There was um, a U.S. family that was on vacation there in Thailand that day, right before Christmas, and they were on a boat trip right in that same, you know, area right at Phuket where the tsunami came in. And all the waters started to recede and they, you know, the, the boat captain was puzzled. Everyone was perplexed, you know, they go, okay, well, let's, we don't know what's going on. Let's go back to shore. And this little girl said, no, I learned this in my elementary school. She was in elementary school in the U S in my class last week, when there's this, you know, a tsunami or when this happens, you don't go into shore, you go further out before the wave builds and crashes. So they actually went out and they lived. Oh my God. Because this little girl had happened to have learned it in, in her class. So it goes to show, right? She's sure happy that uh, she was prepared. Well, you know, that people don't understand that they need to be prepared 
uh, for whatever the risks are in their particular area. And not just, and not just so, you know, 99% of the counties in the United States have flooding. Wow, I didn't so know that. So being yeah. prepared for flooding is important. But also other things like power outages, like look what happened in Texas and the number of people that died in Texas because of power yeah. outages yeah. or in the Northwest when it came to the heat wave this last summer. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think Oregon, they lost like 1500 people because even, of- even the um, like the, the unintended effects of these things, not that any of it's intended, but I, what I mean is like when there's a wildfire somewhere, well then the incredible air pollution and you can't even go outside or you need a mask or it's not even safe to, for your kids to play outside. So it affects a lot more people than, than just those people in the immediate area. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the, the smoke from the fires in Canada and the Western United States made it all the way to Boston last year, this summer. Yeah. And, and so people with any kind of respiratory problems were having difficulty. I was just talking to, so I was, I was at the Inman conference last week and, uh, it was, they were talking about the smoke, either a lot of people from Colorado and how badly the smoke affected Colorado. Yeah. And uh, so when it comes to disasters, people need to think a little bit broader than just, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not living in an area that's going to have 10 feet of water. Well, Mm -hmm. you don't know that for certain, number one, but number two, what are the effects that you're, that you could experience from someplace close by having 10 feet of water? Yeah. And, yeah. and the people don't understand how dirty that water is and how toxic yeah. it is. You know, you see, you see <clears throat> when there's flooding, you see people in boats and you see people water skiing and you're like, it's, all right. It's not, it's not a game. It's not a fun little thing. Yeah. No, no. And, yeah. and trying to make light of it, I think just makes it worse. Uh, I actually talk about tsunamis in my book, when the unthinkable happens, be prepared, be ready because they do happen and you do have to be prepared, just like flooding, just like power outages. Um, There's so many different things. So um, have you been back to Thailand since the tsunami, been back to that area? Um, I've been to Thailand probably about 20 times since then, since I lived in Southeast Asia, but um, Phuket, I think I've been back twice and it looks completely different now. It's so built up, it's so touristy you know, the skyscrapers and big luxury hotels and, you know, so many people on the beach. Um, so, you know, you never know when it's going to happen again or where it's going to happen again. But now they have the tsunami warning signs and they have warning sirens in every place, big or small. Um, I was even, we talked about last time I was on with you, we talked about Nicaragua. I was in, in Nicaragua living there in 2013 and in this little barrio, this little village, and we had a big earthquake. I think it was, I think it was in the sevens, which is really big, Six, high sixes or sevens, but there was a tsunami warning that was imminent. And they didn't say like, maybe it was, it was international news and it said imminent. And so I, I was not taking any chances. And this earthquake was crazy. I was in this little hillside apartment and, you know, the chandelier, the, the water tank starts going. I run outside and I took my dog and got my puppy outside. Then I remembered I forgot my roommate who was sleeping inside. Uh, for, forget them. I went out and, and they yelled at me about that later. But the sidewalk was doing this. And so it was, oh my. it was really big. But they said a tsunami was imminent. And you were saying before that 100 feet rule, I was looking around and this whole village is flatlands. And so, you know, we we basically hired a a taxi just to take us to the nearest inland city just to be safe stayed at a hotel for a you know a couple nights and just to be cautious you know and it it didn't hit um even though they said it was imminent but we were prepared well that's the secret i mean taking this stuff seriously taking it you know great if it doesn't happen great that the tsunami didn't happen but if it did happen, being safe is the secret. And we all, we all think it's not going to happen to us. You know, well, 61% of Americans believe they're going to be affected by some type of disaster or crisis over the next three to five years. Wow. 15 to 30% have some kind of preparation. Yeah. And that's not a good enough number. That's not a, as a matter of fact, you know, we're talking about the holidays. What better gift 
than a go bag or an emergency kit. Um, if you're in the real estate business, what better gift for a client yep. during the holidays uh, than ah, my book? You could give them when the unthinkable happens, be prepared, yeah. be ready. Uh, yeah. That's a great I'm going to need to order about 20 copies of that because I know a lot of people who would want to <laughs> read that. It's uh, well, and I, I wrote it for that very reason. As a matter yeah. of fact, um, I've, t- I've talked to a lot of real estate people and, you know, what a great gift to, to give, like, like when you get a new listing or you have a new buyer, it's a great gift to give somebody that's something that they, they're not going to get anyplace else. Number yeah. one. And yeah. you're giving them something that's useful. You know, yeah. a bouquet of flowers is nice. And a, a basket full of cheese and wine is after you've if eaten it and drank it, it's gone. Mm-hmm. But this is something that people can hang on to. So thank you for the plug, by the way. Oh, of course, no worries. It's <laughs> it's legit. I do want to read it. But yeah, and some of these things, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, run around being so scared of everything and it, quite the opposite. Just have a little knowledge, basic knowledge, share it with your family. Like back in the day, um, there used to be, I remember growing up and there'd be um, uh, like fire, fire drills at school or just at home. You know, they'd say, OK, if there's a fire, this is what you do you know, you touch the door, this is your exit out this window or this door, you know, so just being a little bit prepared and uh, then you could sleep well at night. But these things do happen and they affect a lot of people. Well, Um, and I think you really touched on something important to mention because what being prepared does is it creates a resilient mindset. I mean, mm. you can sleep better because you know what you're going to do. What's interesting is my partner, when she first started working with me, we started working with crisis knowledge management. Um, she lives in, in Woodland Hills, California, in, in the Valley. And there was a little shake and she, because of what we've been doing, the work we've been doing, she had her bag and she had her shoes by the bed and that uh, her, her place started shaking and she, be, without even thinking, and this is the secret without even thinking, she jumped up, her feet were in her shoes and she was at the door with her yep. bag. Yep. Without even, and then she, she got there and she said, you know, before I would have stood up not knowing what I should do. Yeah. And you don't think clearly in those, no. in those, you know, there's conflicting information. You, you're scared, your adrenaline's going sometimes, you don't know what to do. Um, so it's, you know, even a bag, like you said, a to-go bag, I call it a OS bag, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> and then having, you know, flashlights, batteries, clean water, we know where to meet, we, you know, all those things go into uh, your overall safety. So it's great that you're educating people. Number one thing to have, and people don't think about this, is cash. Yep, yep. Because, because if you don't have cash and the electricity is out, you can't use your cards. Yep. So you need to have cash. That's the number one thing. And, and, and you know what? External that's batteries, the- like a little plug-in for your phone and devices, because that's gone, you know, if, if Absolutely. the power's out. Yeah. I have a a really good friend who uh, she lives in Malibu. She was born and raised there and her mom still lived in their family home and they, her her and her husband and their little girls lived a few doors down. She had a real estate company. I think she had 30 or 40 real estate agents. Anyway, uh, when the Malibu fires came through, they were all heading one direction. So it took out, it did uh, destroy her family, her mom's home. And some of the agents at her office, they either lost their homes or they're badly damaged, but the fire was going this direction. So it was going away from where they lived. So they thought they were safe. Mm. And at, in the middle of the night, they got a knock on the door. They had 15 minutes to get out. And she said she stood there for half of that time, spinning around in a circle, yep. not knowing what to take. Yep. And they got to the shelter and she had two little girls. I think at the time they were like four and six years old. They got there and they had absolutely nothing yep. for their kids. Nothing. Yep. And, and so being prepared, having that bag, having yeah. your kids have bags, um, I've got an initiative. I'm and, calling, and the pet, not to interrupt, but the oh, yeah. pet, people I, forget. And then they throw the pet in the car. They're like, we don't have a leash. We don't have medications. We don't have the pet food. You know, it's like. Oh, yeah. and, and a lot of shelters don't take pets. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's a service animal. So yeah. you, all of that you need to think about ahead of time. I have an initiative called Kits for Kids that our goal is to put an emergency kit in the hands of every child through my nonprofit. And the the goal being that if we get the kits in the hands of kids, 
just maybe the parents will think it might be a good idea to have a kit themselves. Yeah. So there's there's an ulterior motive besides making sure that kids yeah. do have kits. And when it comes to kits for kids, uh, first of all, it, you need to know that there, you actually most households need four kits. You need your regular kit that has everything in it, including like if you have some kind of a family heirloom or pictures or something like that, put those in your emergency kit so you know where they are and you can take them and put them in the car and leave. But then you also have to have your go bag, which is something you can grab and go if you have to go right now. You don't mm-hmm. have time to gather. If you have 15 kit. minutes, five minutes, no minutes, right? It's exactly. Right there. Yeah. But then you have to have a kit for your car. Mm-hmm. And and like, for example, if you're in the East Coast and it's a snowstorm or something like that, or if you if there's some kind of an earthquake or something like that, you need to have a kit in your car. Yeah. And if you work outside of your home, you need to have a kit in your office. And people don't mm. think about that. Yep. And then if you have children, they each need to have a kit that they have at school and at home. Yeah. And then if you have elderly or you have people on disability, do you need to think, take into account what they need in their kits? Yeah. So not just having one kit and, and that 30% that people say they're prepared, they usually have one kit and it usually has some food and some water in it and yeah. maybe a flashlight. But that's a couple of D it. batteries and a, a flashlight that takes C batteries. It's a, they don't yeah. really open it until it's, it's too late and they need it. Right. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. So, so being prepared and, and paying attention to the authorities. I mean, yeah. um, if people hadn't had, when that tsunami hit and people would have understood what was happening, then there wouldn't have been 200,000 people dying. No, and this is before internet and this is before, you know, the technology. So they didn't have these advanced weather systems where they got warnings and stuff. They basically, people were like, you know, what is that, you know, coming in? Um, And so they would have saved a lot of lives. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, I grew up in the Midwest and when there's a tornado, I remember we used to get our cameras out and take pictures and watch the tornadoes as they came by. Not smart, (laughs) not smart at all. All right, Norm. Well, I hope you have a wonderful holiday and whatever your celebrations are. I know um, I'm planning a big family event, so this should be a lot of fun. Oh, nice. Yeah. Best wishes to you and to everyone out there. Please be safe during the holidays and be prepared, right? Be prepared. Have a great holiday. Thank you for having me on. And I hope everyone buys your book. Um, It's a great present for the holidays. So thank you, Connie. Thank you, Norm. Thank you so much. All right.